Greetings Church, I pray and hope you're all keeping well. It's been a few days into our lockdown and uh, things are as uncertain as they've ever been. And so I want to encourage all of you to continue praying. Uh, remember that there is hope because Jesus is in control. Uh, so encourage one another, pray and wait and know that God will cause all of these things to work together for our good. The, go the good of those who are called according to His purpose, uh, the good of those who love Him as it promises, as the Word promises us in Romans 8. Now today one of the things that I want to talk about and I've been wanting to talk about is ever since this uh, trouble began across the world, this pandemic uh, started spreading, there has been more and more conversations uh, on whether this really is the end of all times. Is this the end of times? Is this when Jesus is going to come back? Because things are as bad as they can be and they're, they're getting worse and we don't know what to do. And so many Christians are going online and many Christians are preaching about this being the end of all times. Well, maybe, maybe not. You see, eschatology, which is the study of end times, is a very interesting subject but one thing we must remember is that theologians good believers solid sound teachers disagree on eschatology and do you know why they disagree on eschatology whether it's one position or another the reason for the disagreement is because the bible is in many ways intentionally ambiguous about the subject there is a mystery surrounding the end times that the Bible intentionally does not make clear to us. And therefore, there is a lot of disagreement, there is a lot of differences in opinions on how the end of times might be. But one thing I can tell you for certain, the world is not going to end because of the coronavirus. You know, in the study of eschatology, there is a pro and a con and there are many pros and cons probably but there's one particular pro and con I want to bring to you. The pro is if you believe something about the end of all times then you will live your life today in a certain way. In other words your eschatology will impact the way you live your life today. So whichever position you may hold you know, there are, just to throw out the names, there are people who, who believe in the pre-millennial view or the post-millennial view. And these are different views, uh, talking about does Jesus come before the thousand year period? Does he come after the thousand year period? And without going into all of those details, there are nuances in each of these positions that will affect the way you live your life today. Most of Christianity in our cultural context in Kerala are premillennials. And so there is a way they live, there is a way they wait for the second coming and there is a way they, they live their lives today. And that's a pro actually because it impacts the way you live your life as you wait for the coming back of our Saviour. But here's the con. The con is that we can get so caught up in eschatologies that we tend to see the second coming of Christ in almost everything, right? Uh, uh, you will have preachers, there are ministries built on predicting when the Messiah returns. There are ministries built on that and yet we know Jesus tells us of that day or hour not even the Son knows. And you know, Jesus when He came down in human form and lived among us, humbled himself to the point in order to be numbered as one of us that he veiled his own self, his own human self from seeing when exactly the end of times will be. Beloved, that's what being human means. There are certain things God intentionally veils and when he returns is intentionally veiled. And therefore ministries that come to you and preachers that come to you and say Jesus will return in this year, Jesus will return now, Jesus will return after this. We must be wary because we do not know the exact time or place when he shall return. And so the con is precisely that, that we make 
much of eschatology in such a way we read into things that prevent us from actually objectively reading our times. So one of the things that people keep saying is the world is bad, the coronavirus is bad, this is it, the world is about to end. Well, like I said, the world is not going to end because of coronavirus. And knowing a little bit of history really helps because the world has been in much worse situations before. Have we forgotten the world wars? They were bad times. There were times when people actually did think, oh, this is it. This is the end of the world. If you know your church history, Paul was killed by the persecution that arose because of an emperor named Nero. And the persecution of Nero, the tribulation of Christians in those days was so bad that Christians were caught and lit up on fire and put on the street sides, right? They were, they were made to stand on the street side, they were tied and they were burnt so that they would light the way. Imagine that, Christians killed and set ablaze to be the light for the streets. There have been times, the famous, the, the most known, the worst plague to hit our planet is called the Black Death which happened in the 1300s and it is estimated somewhere between 75 to 200 million people died in that plague. We in our times have not seen such bad things. The coronavirus is very bad and so we like people in all these times we look at the situation and go surely the Lord will come back now. Beloved Here's one helpful way to think about it. Jesus is not going to return to save the world from ending. That's maybe a helpful way to think about it. Jesus is not going to return to save the world from ending. Jesus is going to return to end the world as we know it. And that is why I am saying the world is not going to end because of the coronavirus. The world will end because of Jesus. Because He is going to come back to end the world. He is going to come back to separate the wicked from the righteous. He is going to come back to save His people and condemn the wicked. He is going to come back and destroy the world as we know it and create the new heavens and the new earth in which we will spend our eternity with Him. So whichever eschatological position you may hold, there is a sense in which the sufferings of our times might be indicators of when He might return, how soon He might return. And I have no problem in saying, you know what, look at the coronavirus, look at the state we are in, surely the Lord is going to come back soon. Now that's a healthy way to think about it. But the world need an end because of the coronavirus. The world has seen much worse. This is not the Black Death. This is not the persecution of Nero. This is not the World War. This is bad, but it's not as bad. And so the coronavirus is not going to end the world. In fact, when we look at the struggle we are in today, we see the secular and the religious, the government and the people, hand in hand, trying to fight this virus across the world. The world is coming united as much as it can in order to fight this virus. But do you know when Jesus returns to end the world, that's not how the government is going to look. That's not how the princes and rulers of this world are going to look. If you turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 15, this is what you read. Now this is, this is how the rulers of this world will look. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and powerful and everyone, slave and free. So all together, the, all, the whole of humanity from great to small hid themselves, hid themselves in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And listen to this. Calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us 
from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine nations fleeing to caves, looking at mountains and crying out for mountains to fall on them that they may be hid from the glorious face of the Lamb who has come to end the world. Beloved, that's the end of the world. That's what it will look like. Oh, how terrifying that day would be. Which is why Jesus in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 tells us, Fear not those who can kill the body, but fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Beloved, the coronavirus can take your body. It can, it can bring you death and kill you physically. But there is something far worse. And that's what I want to bring your attention to. The world may not be ending. But here's what we should think about in light of the second coming. Here's how we use eschatology in such times. Not in an unhealthy way, but in a healthy way. Beloved, there is something worse than the coronavirus. And do you know what that is? Sin. Sin destroys more people than the coronavirus. Even as we look across the world and we see the number of people that are dying because of the coronavirus and our hearts go out to them and we want to help as much as that is a good thought and a righteous thought, beloved, they are not ultimately destroyed because of the coronavirus. Because the coronavirus may take their flesh, may take their lives physically, but sin will condemn them to hell. People, as before this pandemic and even today, people are dying because of sin. And we as Christians, as much as we pray and cry out for them, we need to cry out all the more because of sin that has infected the world. We don't see lockdown being issued because of sin. We don't see the world panicking because of sin. Do you know why that is? Because with the coronavirus, you have death immediately. You see the consequences immediately. But with sin, there is a delayed effect of that consequence because the effect of that consequence will be revealed with the second coming of Christ. And when He comes and His wrath is revealed, then will men realize, oh, no lockdowns issued, no no. No, 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 no sweat. No, no one is breaking a sweat thinking about sin. But sin is killing more people than any plague and any pandemic or anything else because sin condemns us to hell. Beloved, how much we should pray. Do you see that even if this pandemic passes soon or in a while, when it passes, the reality, the cry of the Christian does not cease because people then and now and forever are dying because of their sins. If you turn with me to Matthew chapter 25 and you look and you think about the end times and the final judgment, you can read this later. I'll just summarize it. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to the end of the chapter, Jesus talks about the end times when he returns on his throne of judgment. And he talks about how he will separate the, the sheep from the goats, the, the people who are his own from the wicked people. Right? He separates them and this is what he tells his people. He says, he looks at the righteous and he tells them, Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then, you know what it says? The righteous will look to Jesus and say, when did we do all this? When, when did you come naked and we clothed you? When were you hungry and we fed you? When were you a stranger and we welcomed you? When did we visit you? And when did all of this happen? And Jesus looks at them and says, 
truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. In the end times, in the final, in the grand finale, Jesus looks at his people and says, the way you dealt with one another in love and care and gentleness and kindness, you have done it to me. Come be blessed. And then he looks at the wicked and says, you never did this. You never clothed me. You never came to me. You never took care of me and all of these things. And they say, when did you come? And Jesus says, as, as you didn't do to the least of my brothers, so you haven't done it to me. Beloved, that's how you use eschatology in these times. Not to look at the coronavirus and tell people that the world is ending tomorrow and so they must tithe as quick as they can to your ministry. That is, that is profane. The Bible does not give any grounds for such teaching. Beloved, whatever may be our eschatology, we can trust in the fact that Jesus will come back not to save the world from coronavirus but to end the world as we know it and to separate the sheep from the goats to take his people to himself and throw the wicked into hell that's the reality and the reality that that will happen is in fact in and among us known because of sin that dwells in our flesh how much more must we as Christians live our lives to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth? Remember, beloved, more souls are destroyed or all souls are destroyed because of sin, not because of a pandemic. And as worse as the situation may be, the cause for us is to hope. Hope and pray, yes, that our Lord may return soon. But let us not be caught up in the end times in such a way that we preach an unbiblical message and distract our vision from that which is most important. Let me close by asking you this question. Which is the greatest hunger that one can, can quench? Which is the greatest thirst that one can quench? Which is the nakedness that one can really clothe? The, the, the greatest nakedness. Is it not of a flesh that is drowning in sin? A flesh devoid of the bread of life, of the blood of Christ that we must drink? Is it not the flesh that is being destroyed naked in its filth? Beloved, the gospel is the answer. That when we look out into the world, we go out and we care for the world and we love the world. Sure, by clothing and caring and taking care throughout this coronavirus pandemic. But how much more by taking care of sinners lost, by drawing them to the gospel that saves, by giving them the bread of life, by showing them the blood that was poured out for them, by showing them their nakedness and having them come and be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. The people of this world live in a prison, a prison of death, a prison of sin. And we are called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus, to break the chains and free men from this captivity. The coronavirus may be a great threat, but it is not the greatest threat. The greatest threat is brought by sin, the wrath of God in his coming again. Let us as people call men to repentance. Let us as people be vigilant, not only now, but even after this pandemic passes, because sin destroys men now and before and even in the future. And our call is to preach the gospel. I hope this was encouraging to you and I pray that you will keep praying and carrying on in these trying times knowing our Lord will work it for our good. In Jesus' name, Amen.